solve. We can solve this. We can, we, we're not going to end the violence because we live in an open, free, democratic society. And as long as we live in that open, free, democratic society, you're not going to be able to get a handle on all of the of violence that happens in our society. Yes. You, I you'll think get a better handle on it maybe in, in, a, in a dictatorship where they just go in and take all your guns and, and uh, lock down and they have Big Brother watching all over you everywhere. they got cameras on every corner. Uh, cameras in every neighborhood. Then you know, you know. Well, we, we have some of that going on now. But, but you know, we don't want to go down that road. So we have to de we have to deal with the challenge within this free and open democratic society, and it, it makes our job much more difficult. But may I follow up with that with yeah. one comment? The reason that your jobs are becoming so difficult is that you're coloring outside the lines of constitutional parameter. And that's the bottom line. You were trying to. And that's the bottom line. You were trying. I own examples of all these types of firearms and use all these different types of firearms in the shooting sports. Um, they are stored in a substantial safe and in a manner that prevents unauthorized access by anyone other than my wife or myself. I believe the language of the Connecticut Bill of Rights, Section 15, every citizen has a right to bear arms in defense of himself and the state, would tend to show that the founders of our state and nation view the law-abiding members of society as trusted partners in the defense of our country, our state, and our towns. Um, that perspective seems in stark contrast to the position I find myself in today. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for your service to our state. Robert Steed, Vernon, Connecticut. I'm a little bit more aggravated at this time than I was uh, when I first got here this morning. This is the third day I've taken off of work to come here to, like so many of the rest of us, plead to you for us to keep our guns because of the actions of some wingnut in Newtown, Connecticut. If that isn't inherently wrong, I don't know what is that these bills are even in proposed form is scary enough. That any of you could be possibly undecided is scary enough. What are you looking at? I applaud those that took so-called Firearms 101, but I can't for the life of me understand how this state can have as many gun laws on the books as it does and have members of its legislature need to take Firearms 101. And as far as the, what I felt were pop shots taken at the NRA earlier today, they've done more for gun safety. They'll do more for gun safety this weekend than this committee will do in your careers. There aren't any gaps in the system every time something goes wrong and every time a crime is committed. Sometimes things are beyond your control. You can't control everything. Evil exists. Adam Lanza commits a crime, and I'm here to grovel and plead for my rights and explain to you that my firearms are kept safely. I keep hearing the word solution. We need to find a solution. You're not going to find a solution. It doesn't exist. You can't find a, a broad brush solution to evil. The media introduced Adam Lanza to the world, which he knew was going to happen, which is why he committed the crimes. They created him like they created James Holmes, the Columbine murderers. They introduced him to the world. They made him famous. And he got a victory because of the media. Now there's laws being proposed to steal our rights because of his actions. More victories for Adam Lanza. That you guys are undecided on that is despicable, any of you. That you may possibly pass any more gun proposals that restrict the rights of citizens in this state will give yet another victory posthumously to Adam Lanza. And that's the bottom line. I don't want to restrict the media 
because they have First Amendment rights, just like I don't want the Second Amendment restricted. But they should have an ethic. There should be an ethical call to the media to stop making martyrs and heroes out of these murderous clowns. And I don't know how else to say it. Anyone have any questions? And thank you for coming to court tonight. Anyone have any questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick comment. Yeah. You know, we feel your frustration, but I don't want you to think for one moment that your efforts aren't being heard here. It's because of the efforts of yourself and many of you here today and people in this legislature that this process has slowed down because there was many in this building in leadership positions that wanted this bill passed a long time ago. So give yourselves credit um, for being here and for speaking up because it has slowed the process down and hopefully there will be a common sense approach at the end of this. So, you know, your words are being heard. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, I agree with you that uh, evil exists. Uh, I agree with you that uh, you shouldn't have to plead uh, to keep your guns. Uh, but I disagree with you uh, when you said we can't find a solution. We, we, there are solutions out there, and we, can, and, we, and we know what some of those solutions are. And there, some of them are common sense solutions, like targeting. I said this before. Maybe you didn't hear me. If, if we target uh, the rogue gun dealers and sellers who are out there who, who engage in the uh, gun trafficking, you can make a significant dent. In, in this issue. If you target the criminals to repeat violent offenders, we can make a dent in this in this in this problem. There are things we can do. I, I, I don't we shouldn't and I hope my colleagues uh, uh, will agree that uh, we shouldn't uh, just throw up our hands and say the problem is too complex for us to solve. We can solve this. We can we we're not going to end the violence because we live in an open free democratic society. And as long as we live in that open, free, democratic society, you're not going to you're not going to be able to get a handle on all of the of violence that happens in our society. Yes, you, I you'll get a better handle on it maybe in in a, in a dictatorship where they just go in and take all your guns and and uh, lock down and they have Big Brother watching all over you everywhere. They got cameras on every corner, uh, cameras in every neighborhood. Then you know you know. Well, we, we have some of that going on now. But, but okay. you know, we don't want to go down that road. So we have to de we have to deal with the challenge within this free and open democratic society, and it, it makes our job much more difficult. But may I follow up with that with yeah. one comment? The reason that your jobs are becoming so difficult is that you're coloring outside the lines of constitutional perimeter, and that's the bottom line. You are trying to merge up public safety with constitutional rights. The Constitution did not guarantee public safety, it guaranteed liberty. And sometimes what comes with liberty is tragedy, unfortunately. And that's, that's what happens. Well, I'm going to agree with you on that. I, I'm going to agree with you on that. Okay. But, you know, you gotta, don't paint everyone with the same brush. No, I, but I need to speak to the entire right. committee. Right, I hear you, but don't paint us all with the same brush. Okay, but that's how we feel that we've been treated. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Anyone else? All right. Thank you for uh, staying with us this evening. And uh, Paul Zukowski, followed by Jennifer Herta and Jason Roberts.